I think our long national nightmare, if not over, has seen the beginning of uh, the end. Uh, Joe Biden declared the winner today, of course. By the time you hear this, uh, this is stuff you already know. Uh, Molly and I spent the afternoon in one of the towns that make up the greater Atlanta area, Decatur, Georgia, where we uh, participated in a lot of fun and frivolity near the... Uh, the little town square. Decatur, Georgia is a, a small town within the uh, the greater metro Atlanta area. And there's a, a courthouse there for DeKalb County. And behind the courthouse, there has been, up until this year, a statue commemorating the traitorous dead scum who fought to maintain ownership of human beings. That statue was finally taken down a couple of months ago. But anyway, here we are uh, with with President-elect Joe Biden and Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And I think it is appropriate now for all people of no color, as people like me, that we should pause, and I mean this seriously, and thank our brothers and sisters of color for putting this over the top without the participation, the active, enthusiastic, determined participation of uh, African-Americans or black people or people of color, whatever. I'm so sick of using these terms. But uh, those Americans who do have color, (laughs) whereas people like me do not, had it not been for Stacey Abrams here in the state of Georgia, we would not be in a position where both senatorial races uh, will require a runoff on January 4th, I believe, January 5th, both of them. And um, it, it, it's just time, I think, that, that, that white people, I'm just going to go back to the old terms, white people, black people, okay. Uh, I believe that white people should finally come to terms in this, uh, in this country with uh, not just the horrors that have been perpetrated against black folk, but the fact that black folk have tried and maintained an attitude of of hope and promise and one more day, one more month, one more decade, and we'll get there. We'll get there. Just, just, just keep moving forward. That's been the attitude of uh, the black leadership in this country for 300 years. But I think it's time that white people acknowledge this. Um, after what black folk went through and enlightened white people in this country about this year with the Black Lives Matter movement, I realize it started a couple of years ago, but this year it really crashed into white consciousness, I think. And it's about goddamn time. Um, I'm just grateful for all the young people who have participated in the Black Lives Matter movement movement, white, black, Latino, Asian, all the white folk who, who uh, not just young people, but uh, older people who have participated, who have acknowledged that it's time to cut the shit. Just stop it. Just for Christ's sake, stop it. Stop being bigots and racists and punks and thugs and fools and accept the fact that we're in this together. We are Americans. And it, it, it's just time to, to stop. And of course, I did not include, and I apologize for the indigenous people, the Native Americans who have been here for 14,000 years. Them too, especially them. And especially the people who were enslaved in this country for 350 years. Come on, folks. I mean, no shit. And I'm addressing this to white people. Come on. Come on. You know that we can do this. You know that white people can do this. Just get over it. These are our brothers and sisters, and we can never again let some degenerate person like Trump divide us, drive those wedges between us. We, we, we just can't. And the other thing I was thinking about today 
You know, the COVID-19 disease is just just galloping ahead with more death, more hospitalizations, more infections, higher rates of infection. And it seems as though to me that COVID-19 has been a metaphor, in addition to being a reality that has killed uh, uh, what 250,000 Americans and probably another two, 300,000 are going to die because of the rotten uh, lack of leadership from this monster that's soon going to be out on his ass. Um, there is that reality, but you can you can look at COVID-19 pandemic in this country anyway also as a metaphor for the sickness that Trump brought with his presidency. He made all of us sick. He made every single one of us emotionally sick, mentally sick. Uh, the cucumbers who follow him and, and the militia, half-wits, they're sick too. They're, they're sick emotionally, mentally, psychologically. Um, so many of us who are not uh, Trump supporters became sick emotionally, psychologically, just watching this destruction. So to me, the COVID-19 pandemic is a perfect metaphor uh, for what this rotten man has, has brought to us. Trump may be removed by January the 20th, one way or the other. I hope he resists. I really do. I hope he decides not to leave so that Joe Biden can send in uh, a squad of Marines or federal marshals and take the son of a bitch by the back of his neck and drag him out. But between now and then, there's no telling what's going to happen. One thing that I'm pretty sure is not going to happen is the Republican leadership in this country all of a sudden find that they have a pair and stand up to this monster. There's, there's nothing now that they have to worry about uh, losing, although Trump can keep talking. Trump, Trump will be around in 2022 to try to screw up that election. We know that. Uh, if he's not in prison, even if he is in prison, he'll be doing his shit from, from a prison cell. That's just Trump. But... I would like to see, even though it's not going to happen, Republican leadership step up now and say, OK, um, we're sorry for what we did. It's over. But this is what Jennifer Sr. wrote. Speaking from the White House briefing room Thursday night, Trump tried to delegitimize the 2020 election. The attempt may have been shuddersome, disgraceful and dangerous, but there's one thing it was not. And that's a surprise. On the contrary. As Jennifer writes, it was predictable. Exactly what do you expect of a man who has spent four years lumbering through Washington, crushing custom after custom and norm after norm? And as this orange bastard uh, faltered on the brink on Thursday of losing the election, which, by the way, he's the first incumbent to lose a a re-election in in, uh, over a quarter of a century, but from the Oval Office, or not the Oval Office, but the White House press room, he declared in his bullshit way that absentee votes legitimately cast were fraudulent, that the workers paid to count those votes were doing something illegal, and that the so-called election apparatus, is the way he put it, in the still unresolved states on Thursday were controlled by Democrats, which they are not, especially here in Georgia, they're record, record by, controlled by Republicans. But he also said, and, and he was speaking of ballot counters in this instance in Detroit and Philly, he said, quote, they're trying to steal an election. They're trying to rig an election. We can't let that happen, end quote. But here's the question that Jennifer Sr. poses, and, and, and I certainly second this question, and that is, are Republicans going to let this happen? Are they going to allow the head of their party, Trump, challenge the integrity of an election with record-breaking participation rates in the midst of a pandemic just because he, the Trump bastard, doesn't like the result? And that's what's going to happen. That, that, that's what, and I'll share that with you in a moment here, a Trump statement. But the Republican leadership has allowed just about everything else and given this monster a, a, a comfortable home. And Maybe Trump's words on Thursday night um, would shock them, but only a couple have spoken up, the inevitable Mitt Romney and a couple other ones. Um, But faced with the prospect of of losing the election on Thursday night, he did what the demagogues do. He starts to challenge the integrity of the election. 
And it's just something we haven't seen in the United States until this orange bastard came floating down out of uh, Trump Tower. And as Jennifer points out, what the bastard said on Thursday night was historic, but not in a good way. This isn't like the Gettysburg Address. These past four years, he's done his best to weaken the foundations of democracy. How many times have we talked about this? But on the evening of November 5th, Thursday night, he seemed hell-bent on breaking this almost 245-year-old democratic system, breaking it itself. You know, telling your nation that the free election it just had is a sham, That's taking aim at the heart and the head of this democracy. But this miserable bastard did it. Of course he did. Um, And so Trump is now doing what any aspiring dictator would do. He's making a mad grab for power. What the people chose doesn't matter to him, of course. He'll use his lawyers, uh, certainly. But just as important, he'll use disinformation. And you know where it's going to come from, from his Twitter feed, from the podium in the White House briefing room, from his own children, those two creepy son of a bitch sons of his and that disgusting, whorish looking daughter of his. Oh, my God. And they are currently throwing Molotov cocktails on Twitter. That, that, that's what the, uh, the, the sons and daughter of a psychopath do. They never had any decent upbringing. They were raised by a monster and they know it. Well, I'm sorry. They don't know it. And that's why they behave the way they do. Um, the, uh, uh, the Twitter had to remove a tweet by this disgusting Don Jr. on Thursday. He called on his father to, quote, go to total war over the election to expose all the fraud, cheating, dead, no longer in state voters that has been going on for too long. Oh, Jesus Christ. Now, I can laugh, but now more than ever, these kinds of lies and bullshit have consequences. We know this. Uh, those of us who simply shrug them off uh, are, are, are either unaware of their reach or don't care. We better care. Their power, their ability to, to cause real trouble. Uh, there was a Facebook group started on Wednesday called Stop the Steal and was shut down within the space of 22 hours after the company learned that members were trying to incite violence. And it's going to continue. And at that point, it had acquired over 320,000 followers. It became one of the fastest growing groups Facebook had ever seen. There are a lot of sick, effed up people in this country, and they're going to be making a lot of noise over the next, uh, what, 60 days, 70 days. So anyway... As Jennifer writes, those who've supported Trump have one last chance to make a choice that history won't hold in contempt. A couple already have. And I'm betting, she writes, that more will join them, though it may be for the wrong reasons. On Thursday, after Trump's news conference, the New York Post, which is owned by Murdoch, ran a story about the, the, what he said under the headline, Downcast Trump Makes Baseless Election Fraud Claims in White House Address. End quote. Now, there's no reason to believe that Rupert Murdoch, who owns that paper, had a sudden flash of conscience. Jennifer writes, I suspect that he likes winners, and he suddenly senses that Trump isn't one. And since Trump is a cult leader, now is the moment he's demanding that his followers drink the Kool-Aid. And maybe Rupert Murdoch decided he just wasn't all that thirsty. So Jennifer signs off with, let's see how many other Republicans decide they aren't thirsty either. Let's see how many of them finally put country before party, deciding it's more important, no imperative, for American democracy to live. Well, um, I certainly respect Jennifer Sr. like I respect so many of the uh, uh, pundits and columnists that I quote on this podcast. But I'm going to disagree with her, and, and I think you will too. You know damn good and well, and so do I that Trump is not going to do anything to honor uh, tradition or, or the law. That's not him. He's a gangster and an ignorant son of a bitch and, a, and, and just a worst possible person, I think, that ever has aspired to the presidency. 
Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.